Some of you may remember back in April, we went down to California and picked this bike up just before the Sea Otter Classic. Had a chance to ride with Specialized and film a dissected on this bike. We have kept it since then and put a lot of miles on it leading into this group review. So it's a bike we've passed around to a lot of riders and have gotten quite familiar with. Um, so I think we've got some pretty solid feedback and notes for you guys. Uh, it is a 150-160 mixed wheeled bike with a the Specialized 1.2 SL drive unit putting out 50 newton meters of torque, has a 320 watt battery internally as well as a water bottle mounted range extender uh, which will give you a little bit more juice. Our S-Works model here weighs in at 39.2 pounds. It uh, retails for $14,000, being that it is an S-Works. Uh, however, Specialized has models starting around $8,000. Uh, the S4 size that we tested here has got a 470 reach, uh, 635 stack, 348 bottom bracket, 432 millimeter chain stays with a 1,238 millimeter wheelbase. The seat tube angle sits at 75.8 degrees and the head tube angle sits at 64.6. Um, there's a lot of adjustability in the geometry on this bike. There is a uh, high-low flip chip as well as headset cups, so you are able to make some pretty big and very fine differences depending on your terrain and your riding style. So I think that's something that Specialized has done really well and is kind of a, a transition over from the full power Levo which we all love very much. Uh, let's talk about power climbing and uh, this updated 1.2 motor, Sean. Yeah, so I mean, it's 50 Newton meters. It's, it originally reinvigorated my enjoyment of SL <laughs> e-bikes okay. um, when I first got time on it. The ergonomics of the controllers, super nice, very yes. crisp uh, power mode selections. And the Mastermind TCU is just one of the best yes. okay. uh, being able to micro tune on the fly mm -hmm. uh, will help get your range out of that 320 it's so much better like you can get 2,000 feet of vert but you're gonna be working for it yeah i i felt like the range wasn't as great as i wanted mm -hmm. compared to some of the other bikes that we were testing um i definitely felt regularly that i was like oh boy we're getting i'm moving through battery here pretty quick and uh you know, it, I had I was relying on that range extender. When that was in, I felt like I could get really solid rides in, um, but I felt like that 320 by itself might have been a little rough if I wanted to get some big bird in. <laughs> or it's, it, it's definitely short. Yeah, or, yeah. I, mean, I think you're, you're gonna be having the uh, range extender on is pretty much essential if you're doing multiple laps a day. Okay. Climbing power and noise, I would say, were two areas that our testers. Uh, thought that the Levo cell was a little bit behind. Uh, the Mission Control app does allow you to make, you know, some adjustment within the parameters, you know, and assist level. Uh, but the bike is louder. Mm -hmm. I think you said the four stall is the only other louder bike. Yeah, this yeah. thing has like a higher pitch whine. I feel mm -hmm. like. Okay. The four stall was a bit lower, but it was audibly louder. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then from a power perspective. It's definitely underneath a few of the other bikes and rewards the person who wants to just kind of soft pedal and sit back and not really charge up trails. Okay. Just being at the low end of the SL power chart, uh, I think that it, it definitely is low. Okay. It just doesn't have the, the gut to really get you up really steep stuff. A nice road, like gravel road pedal to the top of like a really decent uh, enduro section, I think is kind of where this stands out. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely zips along on lower grade climbs yeah. and trails, but uh, yeah, it does lack a little punch on longer sustained steep climbs. And I think just depending on, you know, what your desired, you know, feel of and support of an SL is, uh, or an e-bike is, could be something worth considering. Yeah. Um, flipping into traversing, descending, general handling performance of the bike. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This thing charges. It's easy to move around on the trail. It's got a pretty compact rear end, especially with the 27.5 rear. 
uh, but has loads of traction. You can move it around. It, it's very confidence inspiring. I think, you know, as soon as you get on this bike, it's another one of those. There's only a few bikes out there, maybe five that I've ridden this year that you just jump on and you're like, I can ride this bike on nearly everything. Okay. I mean, it's just so familiar. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That yeah. specialized as a, I think specialized as a really good job with geo and just kind of making you feel instantly comfortable aboard oh, the bike. Sure. Um, you know, just especially when you kind of stand up and you get in that position. Um, you know, some riders, I think some of us thought it was a little bit short. I prefer a mm -hmm. short bike, so I was happy and why I picked the S4 size, but <laughs> you also liked it at 6'2". Yeah, I mean, uh, like you, I prefer a much shorter bike. Okay. Yeah, and I'd take an S5 at this. Okay. Just, it's what I like to ride. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, for me, 511, I, I am happy with the S4 selection. I think any downside uh, in stability or really steepness, you know, confidence is more than made up for in the corners and in tighter, awkward bits of trail. Um, I really like to be active and pick up and yeah. put the bike places. And I think that's where the shorter bike uh, rewards itself. So obviously uh, value perspective, uh, you know, it's, I, I would say overpriced a little bit. Um, I would definitely go down in the range. Yes. I would I would not buy an S Works. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think there's you know other bikes that have like similar spec that that do cost less. Uh, we absolutely wouldn't be dropping 14 grand on a bike. So, you know, I think there are bikes that offer a pretty good spec performance and, and value. Um, but you know, S Works is S Works, right? So yeah. <laughs> if you're gonna go for it if you're gonna go for it. <laughs> So what do you give the, the Levo SL out of 10? Okay, so just because of the climbing power and performance on this being a little behind the rest of them, I'm gonna say 8.25 because it does descend so well. Okay, uh, yeah, that's a tough one. Sean, what do you think? I, I think I'd be right around an eight. I mean, value to motor performance, it just it doesn't make sense to right. me. Um, yeah, it's, that's a tough one for me because Sometimes the descending is so good that it makes me forget about my climbing, you know, power and noise issues and the value. But I probably am going to also have to put this at a, an 8.25. Um, good bike, but, uh, you know, a couple issues to make it stand, I guess, or fall a little bit behind some of the others. The improvement over the last generation is notable. It is. Yeah, it is. It's, yeah. yeah, it is a much better bike than the outgoing Levo SL, which, you know, frankly, was great when it came out because it was one of mm -hmm. the first of the category. But that bike quickly fell behind. This came out, updated that. And now I think this bike sits, you know, pretty competitively in most areas For of sure. the e-bike light category. Um, you know, kind of if it's like, suits into your strengths or weaknesses is up to you and you'll have to stay tuned for our grand finale to see where this bike ranks against the other seven bikes in our group test so thank you guys very much for watching please be sure to ask any questions you have and stay tuned for that round table and final episode thank you guys for watching and we'll see you out on the trails